Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer and I am working for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's uh, topic is going to be what is causing my dizziness? And dizziness is something that affects a lot of people, um, whether it's early in life or late in life, and there are many possible causes. And the most important thing in treating dizziness is going to be to figure out what is the actual cause. And a lot of times when people are dizzy, it gives them a lot of anxiety and stress because it is affecting your vestibular system. And your vestibular system is the part of the brain that kind of tells us where we are in space. And if you don't know where you are in space because you're dizzy, well, that's going to cause you a lot of stress because you can't function on a daily basis. You can't function well. And so we really want to address dizziness as soon as possible so that we can improve function in your daily life. So how we're gonna talk about dizziness today. There are peripheral vestibular system disorders, which are basically they're coming from your inner ear. And then there are central vestibular system disorders, which are coming more from inside the brain. And then there are other disorders that are associated with the vestibular system, but may not actually cause dizziness. Um, so we'll kind of talk about all of them today, but let's get right into the paper. And so I really like this paper, not because it is specifically talking about um, how, how to figure out dizziness necessarily, but it is a nature review. Nature is a very highly recommended uh, journal, um, and it's from 2017. And the title is The Dizzy Patient, Don't Forget About Central Vestibular System. And so the central disorders are a lot of times forgotten by people that work with the inner ear, so like um, otolaryngologists. Um, or um, even physical therapists a lot of the times. They only look at the peripheral vestibular system. And so making sure that we identify that there are possible central vestibular causes is important. And so let's just look right away at the review and they are at the, uh, at the abstract. So vertigo and dizziness are among the most common complaints in neurology clinics, it's pretty common. 13% of patients entering emergency uh, room has have dizziness. And that's, that's an important thing to, to know that if you just come out with like a acute, um, random, um, you don't know what caused it, but you're dizzy, um, going to the emergency room for, first is probably a good idea. And the reason why is because you really want to rule out possible, um, and possible um, more ominous uh, problems, whether it be like um, a tumor or a stroke and those kind of things. Just go to the emergency room and kind of get that ruled out. Um, a lot of times the emergency room doesn't know how to treat it. Um, they may give you some suppressants um, that are going to suppress your vestibular system and they might make you feel even worse. Um, but at least you'll kind of rule out those, those most ominous courses, uh, ominous disorders. But so this review is focusing more on the central vestibular dis disorders. And so the, um, in a tertiary interdisciplinary clinic, so like a physical therapist office, a chiropractic office, most um, of the central vestibular disorders are going to be vestibular migraine. And vestibular migraines are very common. Um, you may not even have headache or head pain that's gonna cause a vestibular migraine. Um, and then, so the important thing is to differentiate between central and peripheral syndromes. There may be, like I said, some like higher vestibular function disorders where the vestibular system is involved, but it's not necessarily causing dizziness, um, but it can cause orientation, spatial memory and navigation problems, cognitive issues. Um, and so that's important to kind of look at. So let's go right down to the first. Also, here are the key points. Okay, I want to go through these two. Uh, we talked about the 13% of neurology patients uh, are entering um, the emergency rooms have a vertigo or dizziness complaint. Uh, vestibular migraine is the most common, most frequent spontaneous episodic vertigo, um, which means it just happens out of nowhere. 
and then it happens for a little bit and then it goes away, comes back later. Um, so, okay, that's good there. Now let's talk about these. So this picture is really good. It's kind of a graph of showing the most frequent vertigo and dizziness symptoms, okay? And so here, all the yellow ones are peripheral vestibular disorders coming from the inner ear, which I'll talk about in a sec. Then the red are your central disorders coming more from within the brain. The blue ones are called functional or psychiatric, meaning that there is no identifiable cause to whether it's in the inner ear or in the brain. There's no identifiable cause. And so they say it's a psychiatric illness or it's a functional. And functional can just mean that there's functional connections within the brain that are a little bit off. Um, and so we don't want to say that it's automatically a mental or psychiatric disorder. It just might be something that we can't explain. Yet, of course, you're feeling dizzy because if you weren't feeling dizzy, you'd be going on uh, moving and exploring and being an efficient person in daily life. And then lastly, you have other disorders and this, just dizziness of unknown ideology. So that's other um, down there. So benign paroxysmal positional vertigo is the most common. It's actually very, very easy to treat and it's the most common. Um, the functional dizziness is another just commonly diagnosed disorder just because a lot of people don't do the testing to figure out if it's something else below. Um, then you have again, central disorders, central vestibular this vertigo and vestibular migraine. So these make about 25% of cases having to do within the brain while the peripheral ones are more like 45%, okay? So uh, you could have peripheral, you could have central. So in the peripheral disorders, like I said here, 45% of patient cases um, in multidisciplinary uh, cases, multidisciplinary clinics, are having to do with the actual inner, inner ear. And so in that inner ear, you can have a problem with these canals here. These canals may cause rotational dizziness, rotational vertigo. That's that benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. That's when you have these little crystals that are stuck in there and they cause dizziness. You may have a superior canal dehiscence, Meniere's. There are a lot of diseases that, that affect um, these canals. And then you also have issues that affect more of the utricle and canal, or utricle and saccule, um, which is like labyrinthine ischemia, which basically means you have a lack of blood flow to that area. And then you have problems that affect the actual vestibular nerve. Okay, so this would still be peripheral. Vestibular neuritis, you have like a viral infection that's affecting this nerve. Uh, vestibular schwannoma, this is a, a benign tumor that's kind of pushing on the nerve. Um, bilateral vestibulopathy, so basically you have damage to both of these nerves that causes you to not really know where you are in space when your eyes are closed uh, because of that vestibular system. You have that lack of information coming in. So those are peripheral vestibular systems disorders and each one has its own um, history. Each one has its own like um, basic history that when you come in, we, we sit you down and we should know 80% uh, probability that you have this disorder based on this history. Um, then we have central vestibular system issues. And so here is a picture of the brain. And so here are all the pathways coming from that peripheral vestibular system in through the vestibular nerve. And then now there's tons of pathways going up that go all the way up to the brain. And you can have a problem with each one of these pathways. You can see there's not only um, bilateral pathways, but they cross back and forth in different areas. And so you can have a problems in the cerebellum or the, the cerebellar flocculus, which are these little um, tiny, tiny uh, little extensions that are sitting right at the base of your brain, at the base of the cerebellum. Cerebellar vermis, which may be more with like proximal stability. Um, you have problems in the medulla, the pons, the midbrain, all through that brain stem. Um, and then even the thalamus and then the cortex. So this PIVC is just a part of the brain that um, is bringing in most of that vestibular um, 
orientation that vestibular sense and it's comparing it to your auditory sense, comparing it to your visual sense, comparing it to your proprioceptive or your uh, muscle sense, muscle and joint sense. And so that allows us to really integrate um, our vestibular system with other areas and even cognition and spatial navigation and being able to know where we are in space. So you can have areas, again, all in these, in these different areas that can cause vestibular migraine, central vertigo, meaning that you're spinning. So there's that. Then let's talk about this. So the, back to the diagnosis. So like I said, besides, besides a history, you also have a physical exam. And so when we look at diagnosis of vestibular disorders, you have this like proximal positional vertigo basically meaning that it just kind of comes on when your head's in different positions or you lie down and roll over. This could be benign proximal positional vertigo, again, happening in the inner ear, or it could be a central positional vertigo, meaning that it's more within the brain. Again, history and exam is kind of what tells us what's going on here. Um, you can have spontaneous recurrent vertigo. So basically it just happens all of a sudden and it's recurrent. It happens once a month or once a week. This could be a vestibular migraine, which is more central within the brain, or it could be Meniere's disease, which is affecting more of the canals in the labyrinth, and it's where there's a lot of pressure that it builds up in the ear, and then you have this drop attack or this, um, this recurrent vertigo attack. You can have longer attacks of rotational vertigo. Again, this could be problems with the peripheral system or the central system. Um, recurrent spells of dizziness or imbalance. So you could just, just feel dizzy or feel imbalance. Um, this could be vestibular proxysma. This is again more within the central system or superior canal dehiscence in the peripheral nervous system. And then lastly, just postural imbalance. So where you just feel off, you feel um, out, of, out of balance, you feel like you can't um, move around as easily, you may be uh, frequently going to fall. And so this can be functional, where they say, again, it's within the brain, but they don't really know what's going on. They can't pinpoint the exact issue. Um, or it's a more of a psychiatric uh, problem, psychological issue. Or bilateral peripheral vestibulopathy, where basically there's damage to the nerves coming in, and therefore you don't have a good sense of where your head and body are in space. Okay, these are just some pictures of places that strokes are common within the brainstem. Um, that is something that we don't need to talk about. And then so here again, these are just places within the brainstem, within the cortex, within the thalamus, within the cerebellum, that if there's a disorder, if there's a lesion, if there's a dysfunction in these areas, it can cause either these syndromes or these physical findings, lateral pulsion and ocular tilt reaction, these are physical findings we find on our exam, okay? Um, and so these are just things to, um, for us to look at as well. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to discuss. Yes, okay, so let's go back here. So now with, with dizziness, there are peripheral disorders and central disorders. Taking a good history, understanding, understanding when it comes on, whether it's a how frequent, is it every day, is it uh, only when I do a certain thing, is it positional, so is it only when I do something, does it come on spontaneous, um, what's the severity, is it really bad, is it not, um, what's the characteristics, is it rotational, does it feel like I'm spinning left or right? Does it feel like the world's spinning or I'm spinning? Um, or is it just an imbalance or a lightheadedness? All of those are super important for uh, the clinician to understand. And then the diagnosis comes, or the confirmation of the diagnosis comes from the physical exam. And there's a lot of things that we may do in the physical exam that are going to help us depict what where in the brain or where in the vestibular system is the problem and then how to fix it. And so it's really important to understand that dizziness is common. Dizziness should be something that should be a little bit fearful because you don't necessarily understand where your body is in space. You feel off. 
um, you may feel a little scared or, or anxious. And so it is important to maybe go to the emergency room, get the um, get some things ruled out. But then it's okay. You you know that that you can get your dizziness fixed. You can move on and become more functional in your daily life um, if you just seek treatment. So um, I really hope you enjoyed this one and you understand a little bit more about dizziness and, and the problems that can occur or where problems can occur in dizziness and that cause dizziness, I'm sorry. And uh, if you have any other questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. So thank you for listening and stay healthy.